Hi, this is Wonder Kids, a podcast where you ask the big science questions and the amazing SciTech staff find the answers. My name is Rose and I've been thinking about how different animals communicate with each other and what it would be like to have a tail because of some questions Phoebe sent in. Hi, my name is Phoebe and I want to know what makes cats purr and I want to know what makes a tail. To answer these biology questions, Evan joins us today. Hi, Phoebe. I'm Evan, and they are great questions. Let's start with your cat question. And I want to know what makes cats purr. Well, it turns out cats purr to communicate a lot of things to those around them. Cats will very commonly purr when they're being stroked or patted, and they're enjoying themselves. However, cats also purr when they are stressed or injured, which can be confusing. The reason why cats purr is kind of similar to why humans smile. Humans smile for a lot of reasons, some of them a bit strange. We smile when we are happy, but we also smile when we feel awkward or nervous. Sometimes we even smile to cheer ourselves up when we are feeling sad. And if you know someone well, you can often tell if their smile is a happy one or a nervous one. Similarly, we can often tell whether our cats are purring because they're happy or because they're stressed. In fact, people who don't even have a pet cat can tell the difference between a sad and a happy purr. So, if you think your cat sounds happy, it probably is. If you're not quite sure, look at the rest of your cat's behaviour. If it's nuzzling your hand and purring, it's probably enjoying itself. The context of what the cat is doing helps us understand what it's trying to say. So, to sum it all up, most small cats purr, and purring is used to communicate a lot of different things. Purrs sound different depending on what a cat is trying to communicate. Now, on to your second question. And I want to know what makes a tail. So, a tail is something that sticks out the back end of an animal. Easy. Of course, things are never as simple as they seem. Biologists have very specific meanings for words that we use all the time. And a tail is an extension of the spine past the rear end of an animal. This means a tail has to have bone or cartilage in it. Cartilage is a bit softer and more flexible than bone, but it is an important part of skeletons. Some animals, like sharks, have their whole skeleton made of cartilage instead of bone. You can feel cartilage in your body, in fact. Your ears and nose are made of cartilage. Animals with a spine made of bone or cartilage are called vertebrates, and only vertebrates have true tails. An invertebrate is an animal without a spine. An example is a scorpion. If you look at a scorpion, it has something that looks a lot like a tail sticking out from its back end. But it's not a tail at all. It is an entirely different thing. So, tails can be long or short, fat or thin, covered in fur, skin, scales or feathers, and they can be used for anything or nothing. But the important thing about a true tail is that it is part of the spine of animals. Thanks for your questions, Phoebe. Thanks for those answers, Evan. So, cats purr to communicate, and tails, like on a cat, are actually part of an animal's spine. We've also learnt some new words today. A vertebrate is an animal with a spine made of bone or cartilage. Only vertebrates have a true tail. An invertebrate doesn't have a spine. It might look like it has a tail, but it isn't a true tail because a true tail needs to be connected to the spine. But scientists won't be mad if you call it a tail. Thanks for listening to Wonder Kids. This program is brought to you by SciTech. Explore your world through wonder. Thank you.